Hi everybody, in this video, I wanted to go over the Canvas component and show you what it looks like inside Thunkable. Let's get started. So I've got an empty Thunkable project here and I'm gonna scroll down on the user interface side until I see where the Canvas component is. Then I'm gonna go ahead and drag in the Canvas component. And right away, you'll notice a lot of things happen. One, we get a whole Canvas component tab. We also get a, punch, a bunch of things under the Canvas component. We get a stage that appears. We see a sprite type and sprites. Let's go through each one. Under the canvas properties, we can see that we can change the height and the width, and we can choose whether or not our canvas is visible or invisible. Then we can choose the margin and the padding and the border, but not really much else. Let's look what happens under stage. Stage is like our backdrop or what it looks like in the background of the canvas. So we can change the background color, we can make it red if we want, we can change the frame color, we can change the background image, we can add multiple images, we can choose how we want it to be resized and its height, its width, whether or not there's any gravity inside of it. Uh, we can also choose whether or not touch drawing is on, so we're allowed to draw on it, and the drawing color as well as the drawing width. That's inside a stage. If we go to sprite type, sprite type, the easiest way to think about it is to think about like a video game. In a video game, we might have heroes and villains, right? And heroes need to be acting in a certain way and villains need to act in a certain way. So we can have different sprite types to denote that. And it can work out really, really well where that every time we touch a villain sprite type, we can lose points. So I've got the sprite type here. We can uh, decide whether or not the we want to have a picture for our sprite. We can choose the height, the angle. We can choose the opacity. So we could choose whether or not our sprite is completely see-through or not see-through. We could choose how much it bounces. We can choose whether or not it's draggable or not. So for example, I can turn on draggable and then if I test it, I can drag my sprite around. Red and red was not a good idea. And uh, I can even change whether or not it ignores gravity and whether it should have a fixed rotation. Um, and I can also decide whether or not I wanna draw on top of my sprite as well. Last but not least, I have the actual sprite that's within that, and it has just about the same exact properties. Let's go ahead and look at the blocks and see what happened. Whoa, that's a lot of blocks just for one component. Remember, this is all the canvas component right here. Let's go through the blocks. The first thing that says canvas blocks has nothing inside of it. Let's go to events. If you go to events, you'll see that we have an event for when the canvas loads, when sprites types are clicked, when sprites collide with each other, when sprites collide to an edge, we can have a different event happen. We can have an event happen when a finger or a, an object is down on the canvas. We can have an event for when the sprite type is dropped. So there are a bunch of different motion blocks too. For example, we can choose the speed of our sprite we can find out what the speed of our sprite is. We can have it give it speed and have it point in a direction. We can move the sprite to a certain spot. We can set the sprite's X to a certain spot. We can find out the sprite's X position. We can figure out where we've touched our active pointer on the screen. We can set the draggability to true or false. We can ask it, is it draggable right now? And we can even stop all sprites as well. If we look at looks, we can change the, the way our sprites look. So we can hide them, we can show them, we can ask, hey, is this visible? We can change the image for our sprite. We can set the sprite's image number. We can change its height. We can flip our sprites to the left or to the right or uh, top or bottom, I believe. Yeah, up or down. We can also uh, change the, we can stamp our sprites. We can have uh, different images of our sprites stay on the screen. We can clear our drawings and our looks. We can draw lines. We can draw circles. We can draw filled circles, so circles that are completely filled in. We can draw polygons, and we can draw filled polygons as well. We can even get an image of our canvas if, if we'd like to. Then under directions, we can point our sprite into different angular directions and we can get the angle that it's currently in. And we can even sense the distance between sprites. We can sense the distance between, or the angle between sprites too. We can also 
add sprite types and remove sprites. And uh, we can do something to all the sprites if we'd like as well. Last but not least, we have our stage. In our, and in our stage, we'll have the background color that we can change, the frame color that we can change, the image number or which image it should be shown. We can change the gravity of the X position or the Y position so we can make our sprites all of a sudden go move to the wall or all of a sudden move down. We can turn touch drawing on, we can change our drawing colors, and we can change our drawing width. So what's under canvas down here? It's just gonna be our height and our width and our computed height and our computed width. You're gonna use that if you think that your app is gonna be used on a bunch of different sizes. Or if you're, if all of a sudden you ro rotate your screen to the side, right, we can have it recompute what the width should be or the height should be of your canvas. And that's pretty much all the blocks of the canvas component. I'll see you in the next video where we're gonna start looking at where is the X and Y access on a phone screen. So I'll see you there.